Initialize camera and let's go. So here we are for another deck tech. Recently I've put to together another commander deck with a bunch of the old cards you've seen last time, though I changed up my strategy. Since the downfall of Zur and French commander, in dual commander, since Zur's downfall, I went and changed my deck. I used the same colors, so I picked the other general of choice. You may not like him because he's probably going to be really popular since he really is that good. Oloro, Ageless Ascetic. This is the guy that, when he's in your command zone even, during each upkeep, each of your upkeeps, you gain two life. Of course, this is going to be a life gain based deck, and just, yeah. And while he's on the field, you can pay one mana whenever you gain life to draw an extra card. So, yeah. Card advantage and life gain. Now, let's look at the other 99. Orjov Guildgate, self-explanatory, comes in tapped, adds two colors instead of just one. Not at the same time, though. Recently got my hands on a Tendo Ice Bridge. Does not come into play tapped. One time use for one man of any color. Other times it's just colorless. Evolving Wilds. Basic enough. Get a basic land, comes in tapped. Whatever color you're missing, there it is. Hero of Bladehold is still in the deck, because this unchecked can really make a huge impact on the game. The fact that it can make two soldiers, in fact they're two ones when they're attacking because Hero of Bladehold is battle cry. So yeah, she can swarm the field quick if she's left unchecked. And I figured a bunch of other creatures that I wanted to put in the deck could be huge threats if they're not taken care of immediately. We want some good uncounterable removal with sudden death. It may cost more mana than your average removal spell, but if the creature's toughness is 4 or less, this kills it, no questions asked, because at a split second, it cannot be responded to. Ashes to ashes, exile 2 non-artifact creatures, does 5 damage to you. Costs 3. And there's a bunch more counter spells, besides just this spell, counter an instant, costs 1 blue. Johnny's Pride Mate. Gets a plus one, plus one counter when you've, whenever you gain life. It's a 2-2 two, two for 2, so you got a nice base there. But you'll be gaining one counter on him pretty much all the time unless someone shuffles Olero into your library and you're playing non-French EDH. Other than that, every turn you'll get plus one, plus one. Because Olero's going to be giving you life. With other instances of life gain, a Johnny's Pride Mate will grow bigger quicker. Recently got my hands on this when Theros came out. Swan Song. Pretty versatile counter spell, considering it costs one and can counter more than just the instant spell. Enchantment, instant, and sorcery, but whoever controlled it gets a 2 2 bird. Bojka Bog, Exile their Graveyard comes in tapped. What else do I need to say? Well of Lost Dreams. Now, this is the card for this deck. It may cost 4 to put it on the field, but once it's there, it's going to provide you with crazy card advantage. At least 2 cards per turn, if you have the 2 mana to spare. Unless Olero's shuffled into your library again. Because, yeah, Olero gives you 2 life each upkeep. So there's 2 cards right there each turn. Just spend 2 colorless mana, and there you go. Underground River. Double land. Dual land. Lightning Greaves. Equip creatures haste shroud. It's really good. In fact, it may be too good. Oblivion Ring, with my own art. Yeah, this card is still in my deck, it just has different art now. This is the one that can exile anything that's not a land, but if it's destroyed, they get their card back. Dark Art Waste, White Blue Underground River. Swamp. That's it, I don't need to say anything else. Greed. Four mana enchantment. One black and two life. Draw a card. With all the life we're gaining, of course, we can use the life for card advantage. Beseech the queen is still here. Get anything we want. Almost. Glacial Fortress. Land. Double. Dual land again. Diabolic Tutor. A tutor. Get any card. Temple of Deceit. Dual land with Shry 1. Nice. Vindicate. Destroy target permanent for one white and black. Really good, because yes, it can hit anything. It's kind of expensive, though, because people use it in Legacy. Spell Snare. 
Counter target spell convert mana cost two costs only one blue to cast. Could it could help. Demir House Guard is only here cause, well, there's a bunch of other key cards in this deck that cost four mana. You'll see Zer's Weirding sooner or later. Well of Lost Dreams, and I plan to even try and get Test of Endurance in here. With all the life you're gaining, if you're at 50 and can just drop a Test of Endurance down, you'll win instantly. Unless they have a response. Tron Catacomb, Dual Land, City of Brass, Rainbow Land. Supreme Verdict, board wipe that can't be countered. So yes, this will get you out of many jams, I can only assume. Also, it's really popular in Esper Control decks and Standard right now, so yeah. Shadow Mage Infiltrator. I think I had this guy in my last deck tech video. This is the guy that's really, really hard to block. And whenever he does damage, you draw a card and cost three. So yeah, more card advantage. Exotic Orchard. Reversed Reflecting Pool. If the opponent can produce a color of mana, so can you. Just hopefully they're not running only red or only green. Otherwise, Exotic Orchard is useless almost. Dissipate. Counter target spell and exile it instead of putting it in their graveyard. This is the one with the old art. Fault of the Archangel. It can give your team death touch and life link. Counter spell. Day of Judgment. Another board wipe. Not as good as Supreme Verdict, but still. Sea of the Synod. Blue artifact land. Not a spell. Obzadat Ghost Council. I mean, these guys could also give you some extra life, which can trigger the whenever you gain life abilities that you'll see in this deck. Plus, they're going to be. Plus, sorceries aren't going to be effective against them because they just keep blinking in and out whenever you want them to. This card gave me a lot of troubles in standard, and now that it's sort of the hype to use this has sort of died down in favor of the monocolor decks like Mono Blue, Mono Black Devotion. This card's price went down, and since then I got my hands on a copy. Ancient Den in bad condition. This is how I got the card for cheap. Doomblade, destroy target non-black creature. Hypnotic Spectre, whenever it deals damage to a player. Yeah, damage. You, if you could give this like an arcane teaching or something, then yeah, that would count too. They discard a card at random. Plus it flies, so yeah, that's why I run it. Evasion and card discard. Hypnotic Spectre is a beast, Nuff said. Demir Guildgate. Negate. Counter target non-creature spell. Temple of Silence. Another Stryland from Theros. This one's white and black instead of blue and black. Plains. Ancient Ziggurat. Rainbow Land that only allows you to play creature spells with it. Tide Hollow Scholar. Exile a card out of someone's hand. 2-2 two, two for 2, so you got an okay creature there. Demir Aqueduct. That's one of those bounce lands that could be really risky to play, because if they have a land destruction, it's like they'll be getting rid of two lands. Azorius Guildgate. Oblivion Stone. One of the few options of mass removal that any color could use. Because yes, this is an artifact. Plus you can save some of your own permanents, so in a really long game, you'll probably want to put fate counters on your best permanents, then wipe the board, so your stuff can survive, or whatever you protect. Just be careful, because if they destroy your stone before you can wipe the board, then well, yeah. Dismember. Really nice removal, but it's not as cool in Commander since, even if you could play this without having to run any black in your deck, this card is still black, so if you don't run black in Commander, nope, can't run Dismember. Yeah, this is probably one of the best green removal spells ever. Swords to Plowshares. If you're not running this in your commander deck, which is white, then I don't know what's wrong with you. A Swamp. From Water Magus, which is my custom set that I uploaded a while back. This is not real. It's just an altered swamp that looks different from normal swamps. It's got the future shifted card frame. In fact, the whole set had that. I don't know what I was thinking, but yeah. I definitely want to make more future-shifted lands, like basics. Find better art and make them even cooler. Dromar's Cavern. I still have this. 
Plus, I recently got and treat the angels. If I can cast this for the miracle cost, then that could end the game right there, unless they have a board wipe of some sort. And the card, Sanguine Bond, just because it's a life gain deck. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. Well, you'll be draining them for at least two per turn, because Oloro. Plus, there's some life linkers in this deck. And when those hit, then that's pretty much extra damage. Vivid Meadow. Speaking of life linkers, here's Baneslayer Angel. She was really popular back in M10, M11 Standard, because, yeah, back in whenever she was in Standard. Even in Modern, she makes an impact. Like, two Baneslayer Angels is like almost nothing you could do unless you could remove them. If you can't remove them, you're pretty much screwed because they keep gaining your life. You're having a 5-5 five, five for 5 of flying, lifelink. The first strike doesn't come into play too often because it flies over stuff anyway. And the protection from demons and dragons because, well... Not too many demons and dragons exist compared to other creatures, but the flying and the lifelink on the 5-5 five, five for 5 is just amazing. Plus there's Divinity of Pride I'm going to want to search out too. Hint to Turok. Self-explanatory. Two black, discard two cards from the opponent's hand at random. One of the best commons ever printed. Wand of Denial. Not so self-explanatory. Exclusively for this deck, because you're using up your life gain to mess with your opponent's plans. Once per turn, look at the top card of the target player's library. If it's not a land, pay two life, put it in their graveyard. Just gotta get lucky with that. Get rid of all their best stuff. And with the life gain, well, you'll have more than enough life to spare to keep taking their stuff away from them. If that's how you choose to use it up. Mortify, destroy target creature, enchantment, moving on. Underworld connections. Keeping constant pressure, except when your land stays tapped down extra card each turn at the cost of only one life which is almost nothing compared to that extra card demonic tutor one of the best cards ever printed pay two I'm not kidding two look this up for yourself search your library for anything diabolic tutor is a fixed version of that duress simply amazing discard spell that's really common now so you won't have much trouble getting your hands on one of these at all. Go for the throat. Destroy target non-artifact creature. Detention Sphere. Multicolor Oblivion Ring that's not going to do anything extra in Commander because everything is restricted to one copy. Unless the guy has a swarm of tokens and you'll just get rid of all the tokens. Because yes, this thing exiles everything that shares a name, not just one permanent. But in Commander, however, where it's a singleton format, Unless tokens swarm the board. This is no better than Oblivion Ring, but still, it's an Oblivion Ring anyway. Mother of Runes, if you're not running Mother of Runes in a white deck, then something's wrong with you. This card's amazing, especially in this bigger creature situation deck. It'll keep them from this, this bad things happening to them. Sun Titan's back. Well, he wasn't in the Zer deck ever, because, yeah, I played smaller creatures. I moved on to bigger creatures such as this. And I figured there's enough interesting permanents in here with cost three or less to bring back. Which he can do it when he comes in the battlefield, or even each time he attacks. Logic not. A beautiful looking foil card, but it's not as good as some others. If you're if if the game has gone on for very long and you have a lot of cards in your graveyard to spare, then then however this would work. Otherwise, you may just want to run syncopate or something. Counter target spell unless its controller pays X, which you could reduce the cost of that X by exiling cards in your graveyard. And there's two blue on top of that. That's like the base cost. Merciless eviction. It's an okay removal spell. I mean, you exile stuff, so animation strategies get screwed. Reanimation strategies get screwed over on this. And there is here is Zer's Weirding. Despite the fact the Zer deck I ran never saw this card at all. 
So there's still a piece of Xur in this deck, though the commander Xur the Enchanter is long gone. Players play with their hands revealed. Whenever any player draws a card, the opponent may pay two life to force them to discard it. If you can get enough life and card advantage, this will royally screw over your opponent. Just get them in a headlock. They'll have they'll they won't have enough life to keep up with all the cards you're drawing, and you'll have more than enough life to keep them from drawing anything else ever again. With enough card advantage and life gain, this card could just end the game completely for them. I've never done it, but I want to do it. Orzhov Signet. Manorok. Self-explanatory. Vault of Whispers. Black Artifact Land. Self-explanatory. Blue Vivid Land. Dark Tutelage. Card Advantage. Dark Confident. The Enchantment, pretty much. Mana Leak. Yes, I'm still running this even if the games drag on for very long. Spell Pierce. Another soft counter. If the game's gone on too long, then it won't do anything. Early on, it'll be really effective. Yeah, the soft counters are always going to be better for fast-paced games. Like the last two you just saw. Vampire Nighthawk. All around, really good creature. He was in my Zerd deck because he was just good. And here, the lifelink actually is going to contribute to the strategy you're trying to achieve with Oloro. Plus, the death touch is always nice. And the evasion. The flying, the death touch, you can get rid of some other flyer if you choose to block with this, or just gain some life and have fun with Oloro. Rock's Faith Mender, because this is a life gain deck. What life gain deck does not want a card that can double your life gain? So yeah, double the fun for you and double the suffering for everyone else. Terramorphic Expanse, Evolving Wilds, Command Tower, the best land in the game. But only if you play Commander. Either this or Gaia's Cradle. But Gaia's Cradle is better anywhere. <laughs> but it's it's better in anywhere other than I don't know. Gaia's Cradle can work anywhere out anywhere. This uh, Command Tower only works in Commander. I don't know. Dwarrel Refuge, blue black comes to the play tapped, gives you one life. That's actually handy. Even if it's just one life, it'll trigger Olro's life gain thing. It'll trigger. It'll also help you draw an extra card off of Well of Lost Dreams. It would also give a Johnny's Pride Mate an extra counter. Swiftfoot Boots. Modern Day Lightning Greaves. Using the Hexproof ability. Tainted Pact. Try not to exile too many cards from your library. You can control what you exile. Not like with Demon of Consultation, which is no longer in the deck, because too often it could backfire, leaving you with not enough cards to salvage the game. Or, if the card you're trying to get is in the top six, you just lost the game. Not at that point, but next time you draw, which is your next turn. So yeah, you're pretty much screwed anyway. Fairy Conclave. A man land that flies. That produces blue otherwise. Grave Titan. If I got Frost Titan, I'd have all the Titans for this cycle of colors. Well, all the Titans in these colors. This guy, when he's left unchecked, can, cause, can create a huge advantage for you. When he comes into the battlefield, or attacks even, much like Sun Titan, all the Titans shared this enters the battlefield or attacks. Put two, count them two, two, two zombies onto the battlefield. So you can swarm with zombies, much like Hero Bladehold swarms with soldiers. Azorius Chancery. The white-blue bounced land from Ravnica. The first one, not the newer one. Snow-covered plains, Vivid Marsh, the Black Vivid Land, Caves of Koilos, the White Black, a Dark Heart Waste, Underground River, Painland, Island, Sphinx of Jawar Isle, costs six mana, but he has Flying and Shroud, and on a five-five, that could be a good beater, except you won't be able to give him, you won't be able to just give him some nice stuff with spells and abilities or whatever. But yeah, he can't have everything. Gemstone Mine. The Rainbow Land you can only use three times, but it does not come into play tap, thankfully. Tarnished Citadel. Costs a lot of life, but hey, with an Oloro deck, that won't be so bad anymore. Does not come into play tapped. Taps for a colorless, or if you lose three life, or you're willing to, one man of any color. 
crawl space to screw over swarm decks. No more than two creatures can attack you each combat. So yeah, fast-paced swarm decks will just get shut out. Unless they have a way to destroy crawl space. Orzhov Basilica. A land. Unmake. Remove target creature from the game for three. Or as it would be nowadays. Exile that creature. Still really nice. Blind obedience. <laughs> More reasons to enjoy the life gain. Plus, it can slow down your opponent's creatures when it comes to blocking. Yeah, what don't you love about that? A Chroma's Vengeance, a board wipe. Enough said. Cradle of Vitality. Now this could be really fun if you actually get to use it if you have creatures. Whenever you gain life, you may pay two mana. If you do, put a 1-1 one -one counter on a target creature for each one life you gain. So that would be at least plus two plus two for any creature of your choice every turn with Oloro if you have the two Man of Despair, one of which has to be white. Umazawa's Jite. Or Zite, or Zite, or Jite. How do you print the... The the only real problem with having this card is the fact that you gotta spend a lot of money to get it, and you gotta learn how to pronounce its name. Self-explanatory, this is one of the best equipments in the entire game. It's removal, it's... It's life gain! It is life gain! In fact, here's the really brilliant part with Jite in this deck. With your Oloro guy out, this thing has two charge counters. Rather than removing both the charge counters at one time to gain four life, it would be better to just make two instances of the life gain. Remove one charge counter to gain two first instance of life gain, and then remove the other one for your second instance of life gain. So you could get extra two extra cards with Oloro each turn you attack with Jite if the creature does its damage. And this is also a removal. It could kill stuff like attack with this, two charge counters, remove those, kill something with toughness two or less, or kill two X1s. Or just hit for a lot of damage. Yeah, that card is insane. It's banned in modern, so yeah. And Bitter Blossom is still here. I did not sell my copy of Bitter Blossom. It was here in the last time I showed you a deck tech, and it is still here. It's worth a lot more than it used to be, but I'm not getting rid of it. I am keeping it. Because, yeah, it's just so useful. Even in a control deck, this could just stall out your opponent, even if they have flying creatures, because the tokens do fly. In an aggro deck, You'd be able to swarm your opponent with these. In a control deck, you'd be able to stall them out. So it works either way, really. And here's the maybe board. Cards I want to try and include are cards I have included in the past, but didn't get so much good results with them. Okay, I tried Sphinx of Othun in the past. Not to get too many good results with them, or I just didn't have room for them, actually. The mere Infiltrator... I tried in the past, but I think I'd rather get the four drops with the mere house guard. Castigate. Amazing discard spell I just couldn't find room for. Anul and Envelop. I figured I could do without those counter spells. Angelic Accord, because I wasn't so sure if I could always have it that I'm gaining four life. You need to gain four life each turn for this to work, otherwise it does nothing. But if it does work, then well... You'll be laughing. Getting a 4-4 four, four angel every turn is nothing for the opponents to laugh at. Daxos. He may go back in the deck because he's giving you life. Well, if you don't hit a land with his ability. Moving on. Dissolve. Couldn't find enough room for this counter spell. Necrotic Sliver. He can pretty much sacrifice himself to destroy any permanent, but I couldn't find room for him. Banisher Priest, I found other options for removal. Lingering Souls, because this isn't really that swarm deck anymore. Plus, I don't think Lingering Souls is enough to protect you for long. Demir Signet, couldn't find room for it. It's another Manor Rock, much like Orja's Signet. Yeah. 
there was counterbalance too. Most of the time, this didn't do much, so I didn't even feel like keeping it in the deck. Force Spike's going to be trickier to use at the right time, but if you can use it, you'll be laughing. It only costs one to counter a spell, but yeah, things got to be just line up perfectly. Which they haven't all the time. Nevermore used to be in my Zur deck. In fact, this card was really helpful in a Zur deck. It could pretty much protect Zur from any of his weaker matchups. Just fetch this. Yes, this was an enchantment with cost 3 or less. Of course, Zur could pull it out. Pretty much name a card, and that card, for as long as Nevermore is out, cannot be cast. Anything that gives Zur problems could just be banned with Nevermore. Hypothetically banned, but yeah. Stinkweed Imp is not in the deck anymore, but he's still a cool card. Especially since I got him in foil. One of the few good things I actually got out of those Modern Masters packs was him. This I was talking about earlier, that I don't run anymore because it's way too risky, and often enough it screws me over. <laughs> Best tutor, but also the riskiest. Even better than Demonic Tutor. But this, unlike that, can actually backfire and screw you over. Demonic Tutor, nothing can go wrong with it. <laughs> Ad nauseum. An amazing draw spell, especially for this kind of deck. You can draw as many cards as you want, and it'll be even eager to draw more since you have enough life to lose, considering you're gaining it with all a row. Except I couldn't find enough room for this, and it costs five, so yeah. This may work. You may want to try this in your Olaro deck if you can find room for it ad nauseum. Even though the art is creepy. Like, what is going on with this guy? Like, what happened to his hands? Flash Freeze, a situational counter spell. Counter Tiger Red or Green spell. I mean, this could be handy enough, but I'll just keep it on the sideboard. Mental Misstep. It's even banned in Legacy. But I don't see too many one drops going around Commander, so yeah. Not really thinking about putting this in, but hey, it's in the maybe board. Here's the other similar to Cradle of Vitality card that I just couldn't run, because yeah. Sun Bond. Whenever you gain life, put that many 1 1 counters on Enchanted Creature. It too costs 4, like Cradle of Vitality. Read the Bones. Much the newer sign in blood. Mind Shatter discards X cards at random for X and 2 black. A little worse than Mind Twist, but still. And this guy I want to get in the deck. Viscopa Guildmate. Though I'm unsure if you could use his whenever you gain life this turn, each opponent loses that much life, and two instances of that ability won't just be redundant. So, for example, you gain five life, then play Viscopa Guildmate's ability twice, I am not so sure if they'd lose 5 life due to the 2 instances of that ability being redundant, or if they'd stack and he'd lose 10 life instead. Now that's something I gotta ask before trying to get Viscopa Guildmage in. Cause yeah, that could be pretty handy, especially if you got something that's gaining you a lot of life. Like a Baneslayer Angel has been pumped by Cradle of Vitality. So yeah, I figured Olaro would be showcased. And I may come back with another deck text soon enough that's... Not a control build. So yeah, the point of this deck, in short, is to gain life and abuse it. Stall your opponent out of the game, slow them down, do whatever you need to do, play your big creatures and try and end the game with those. So yeah, I think that's how I can sum up my deck in less than 30 seconds.